Hey everybody, it's Retro DM Ray back with another episode of the Back to Basics series um, with you. I know it's been a while, sorry for that. Um, life happens and uh, work happens, those kinds of things. And this subject is a little bit difficult for me to handle um, as far as I needed to do some background research a little bit for this one. Um, so I hope that you enjoy this one as you've enjoyed the others. Um, let me first give a shout out to... Uh, I know I'm going to butcher your name, and I'm sorry, brother, but Paolo Frota, um, for his comment um, that he posted about a week or so ago for my uh, Sample Dungeon Expedition video, and then also a shout-out to uh, Fred Daniel as well for his comment um, that maybe a subtitle should be The World We Have Lost. And uh, Fred, I did consider that very genuinely for the title for this video. Um, but I decided to go with this one uh, just quite honestly because uh, my uh, my take on this and my look at this is coming from the perspective of um, I wonder what kind of started to break the game. And I put that in quotes, break the game as in um, kind of forever change the way in which the game is actually played by the players. So that's the title for today's um, episode is um, actually Broken Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and I mean that from my own personal perspective, uh, my own thoughts on the matter. If the game is not broken for you, great. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever game you play, as long as you're having fun, um, that's the point. That's how you win, quote unquote, is if you're all having fun together, whatever system you might be playing. So um, get into that, get going with that, and have a lot of fun with whoever you're gaming with. Um, and as I always say, um, this channel is going to be G-rated constantly, so we're going to again talk about this topic from that particular perspective. And as I posted on discussion on my channel um, a while back, if you post anything that's not G-rated, I'm going to hold all that for review. And if there's language in there, of course, I'm going to have to remove that. I may have to remove your whole comment. Um, but that doesn't mean that I won't respond to you in perhaps another way. If you have a channel where I can um, go put in something on your discussion uh, section of your channel about the answer to that a particular comment or series of comments, I'll be glad to do that. Um, but just not going to have that on my channel so that I can keep it 100% G-rated and family-friendly. All right, so having done that, uh, let's get this out of the way as well. If you like these videos, you like this channel, you're learning something, you find it be to be creative, fun, and interesting, um, click on the like button, uh, subscribe, um, click on the bell icon so you'll know when we get new videos out, um, share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your kids, um, and just enjoy these things. Um, Take a look in the description where I will uh, provide links for anything that I talk about here, as well as I'll provide links for our uh, PayPal tip jar if you'd like to leave us a tip to help us out during COVID and, and those types of things. It'd be very much appreciated. Um, so I'll have that down there as well. But again, thanks for all of you who've been commenting, who've been watching the videos and following the channel. Um, I really, truly appreciate the support. I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, Rob's Game Group. Um, uh, he's been... Uh, 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 commenting on here as well, and I've been enjoying some of his videos. Um, I haven't checked out everything he has, so again, I can't I can't say he's 100% G-rated, but he stuff that I have watched recently has been some really good stuff, so you might want to go check out his channel um, if you're interested in venturing over in that direction. All right, so I want to first go to uh, Moldve Basic, um, where I'm going to talk about kind of, and I'll jump off from here um, into some other books as well. Um, but the idea that we're talking about today is one of the things I think that started to really cause the whole uh, Dungeons and Dragons broken system mess kind of thing that we're talking about today is um, non-weapon proficiencies or skills, quote unquote. Um, Paolo makes a good comment when he says um, players would always say, hey, uh, so I want to roll X um, to do this. And when they look down at their sheet um, and the reality is um, that like he says in his comment, um, let me find it for you real quick. He says, uh, no, dude, if you say you want to, you say what you want to do. And if necessary, the GM asks for a roll. Um, so I believe that wholeheartedly. I think that's how it should function, how it should operate and how it used to operate back in the old school days. Um, I think a lot of that's lost in the new school systems, but we'll get to that. Um, as I jump off from, um, mold base basic in the section on page B60, again, DM as a fine art, um, he says this, there's a section that says, that's not in the rules. 
The players will often surprise the DM by doing the unexpected. Don't panic. When this happens, the DM should just make sure that everything's done in the order given by the outliner sequence of events being used. Minor details may be made up as needed to keep the game moving. All DMs learn how to handle both new ideas and unusual actions quickly and with imagination. And I would argue that players ought to be able to do the same thing, that they ought to be able to decide what they want to do quickly to keep the game moving um, and move on and not be uh, fussy about all of that stuff and flipping through books all of the time. All right. Um, and then he starts this conversation um, about the fact that a character wants to jump a chasm to escape. Um, he describes to them the fall is 60 feet how much damage they might take, and that there's a 98% chance that they'll die with no save. Do they still want to jump? So then he would roll percentile dice, and 99 or 100 would mean that they live. Do you still want to jump? The next bold point is there's always a chance. The DM may want to uh, base a character's chance of doing something on his or her ability scores, strength, dex, so forth, to perform a difficult task. So this is the beginning of using the ability scores or rolling the ability score or less to accomplish something that you want to accomplish, right? So this is the beginnings of this. Um, this was written by uh, Moldvay in 1981 when this was first printed. Immediately on the hill, heels of that was um, uh, Cook's Expert Set. And um, in Cook's Expert Set on page X51, we have something similar so you can see the creep that's kind of starting to come into this process. Um, you're kind of um, beginning to slowly help the players to kind of begin looking down at their sheet and trying to figure out, can I do something or can't I do something? Okay. Um, so on X51, an expert, um, he says, player characters will often want to do actions not specifically covered in the rules or by their character descriptions. And then he skips down and some ideas on how to handle different situations are presented below. So then he says saving versus abilities. In parentheses, it says optional. The DM may want to base a character's chance of doing something on his or her ability ratings. And they must roll the ability rating or less on a d20. The DM gives a plus four, minus four, depending on the situation. Then the next one is swimming. Char the characters may swim unless the DM decides otherwise. Movement rates half as normal. Gives them a chance to drown or drown, um, depending on whether they're wearing armor or not. Then you go to climbing. Thieves and only thieves can climb steep surfaces, sheer walls, slide overhangs. Um, but all characters, however, can climb obstacles like trees, steep hills or walls with handholds and footholds carved into them. Save versus the character's dexterity score. Then it talks about foraging for food. Searching for food can be done while traveling. Roll a d6. You find enough food to feed for one to six men for one day. Um, to hunt, you spend a day without moving. One in six chance of encountering a monster, and you can successfully hunt. Um, days spent resting cannot be used for hunting. So already we have, in 1981, the introduction of characters saying um, this particular statement. Okay, so how do I do that then? Um, rather than saying, um, I want to do that. And the dungeon master, knowing that character, knowing the, the information that that, that that player has told the dungeon master about their character, um, maybe where they came from, maybe a little bit what, about what they're like, maybe not anything like that at all. Maybe they just sat down at the table and were given a random generated character. And so the dungeon master just talks with the player and they just decide whether they think the character can do that or not. And then the player just tries it. And then the dungeon master decides either it works or they, they necessarily make them roll something or not. Um, so the players can try whatever it is that they want to try. Um, what happens here, though, when you see this in basic from Moldve and expert from Cook, what ends up that ends up progressing to from really 80 to 81 is it progresses then into um, Mystara in the Gazetteers. Um, but it Mystara, the Gazetteers, didn't come out until after Beckme in 1983, where Frank Menser came in and he was great for the game as well. I'm not knocking him. He came in and codified really, um, I think, in, uh, in his basic book, but certainly in his expert book, without question, um, the idea of the fact that there are non-weapon proficiencies or non-weapon skills. 
Again, in 83, this is about when this happened. Then you have um, the My Star Gazetteers coming out, because remember in that Beckme set, that was all set in the My Stara world at the time. That was kind of their official um, world at the time for the old school Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and then it moved from there quickly into uh, um, Oriental Adventures, which actually put it down in their very system uh, in the book. There's a specific system in there, which is um, Oriental Adventures, and the proficiencies themselves in Oriental Adventures are on page 51. Um, that really fleshed out those. Um, that was in 85. And then also in 1985, you have Gary Gygax doing Unearthed Arcana. Interestingly, though, um, that was not something he was initially interested in having in the game, because if you look at the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide, um, from much earlier than that, um, I'm trying to see the publication date here real quick. Um, the first printing looks like it was 1979, so Gary was not really interested in that idea. That was more for NPCs and for sages to be asking those kinds of, how do we do that? Um, what do I have for special skills that I can do? All of that kind of conversation. So he simply put um, a couple of paragraphs and a small table on page 12 of the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide called Secondary Skills Table. Um, and he specifically says there that um, this was something that the character did before they became an adventurer. So maybe this was like a background piece of information that they might have had that if they wanted to pull on and rely on, I guess they could. But the reality is that was what you used to do before you've left that and you've moved on to becoming an adventurer. So you can see that in Oriental Adventures. Um, you see that that's made its way into the game after the first edition, a Dungeon Master's Guide. It's progressed forward into there. It's, like I said, progressed into Unearthed Arcana, made its way definitely as a solid placement in the Wilderness Survival Guide. The Dungeoneer Survival Guide was implemented there. Um, Non-weapon proficiencies, um, skill checks, um, stuff like that, so that you could do something, right? And that's, that's kind of what we have there that's really taking place. Um, so I, I guess my, my issue is going to be that I'm going to take with that is um, if you have a lot of that stuff written down on your sheet, then you're going to continue to want to turn your eyes toward the sheet and see what you can do and then also see everything else you can't do. So you're not even going to try to do that, right? And that's just the natural mindset. If I have a list of things I can do, and I have a list of other things that I, I can't do in my mind, right? I just naturally do it that way. We naturally gravitate that way in our thinking as humans. And so when I'm playing my character, that's exactly what I'm doing. If I have to have all of that written on my sheet, then it stifles my creativity, my ability to actually make a choice, to actually do something in a very creative, on the flow kind of a way. And also remembering the fact that I'm not playing me. I am me playing a character. I'm imagining all these fun, crazy, creative, silly things that I can try to do. And so I don't want anything in front of me that's going to tell me that I can only do this and I can't do this. Now, maybe in your games it didn't work that way. That was just like um, little little rails that you had on it, but it was not bumpers that you couldn't get out of like in, in bowling, right? It was just maybe training rails to like guide you in some decisions, but you ultimately let your players kind of go uh, out of sight of those rails, no problem. And we did that sometimes too. Um, but when I look at the new systems today with all of these tremendously codified skill systems, um, this seeped into second edition Dungeons and Dragons and became just out of control, got into the complete books and just went beyond that as far as I could see, went into uh, third edition for sure, 3.5 even further, traveled over into Pathfinder first edition, which was D&D 3.5 in just a different way, slightly different way, I should say. Um, then uh, you have fourth edition, which just went even, even a little crazier with that. Um, now you have Pathfinder second edition. You got all kinds of, of stuff like that as well, and all kinds of uses for all of those things that have to be rules codified. So you got a 600 and some page um, core rule book, um, all those kinds of things. It's just all of those things just heap on more and more and more and more complications, which I think stifle more and more and more creativity and direct you more and more and more to the sheet. 
And what I'm trying to say here and getting back to basics is that if you put all of that aside and you just have the bare bones of something on your sheet, then you can freely play and do all kinds of things and whatever you can think of to try to do, you can have the ability and the freedom to try to do. That's why, like I said last time, one of the things we're going to start talking about on this channel, and I think I will probably do it right after this video, my very next video, is I'm going to start going through, reading through um, the Basic Fantasy RPG. Because Chris Goneman and that collaborative team, because it's not just his, that whole collaborative team put together a system that is very much like I'm talking about. But what they also did was incorporated um, ascending armor class and a little bit better way to work out level um, energy drain from a level loss from undead and those types of things and, and a couple of other things. They did encumbrance a little bit better. Ways that, honestly, if we would have known how to do those or thought of it back then, that's the way we would have played old school too. That just wasn't how it was originally written. Um, so I just I want to encourage you um, to look forward to the next video as well as we talk about that basic fantasy RPG. Um, I'm really, really excited about that as well. Um, I hope you are enjoying the channel here today. I hope that uh, if you don't agree with me, understand, like I say, it's your game. You play whatever you guys are having fun with. Totally cool with me. Um, and we'll play whatever we're having fun with um, and, and we'll we'll all have fun and, and we'll quote unquote, we'll win with that as, as best we see fit, the, the most fun that we can have. Um, but this channel is strictly going to be devoted to, um, at least for right now, going forward, the idea that uh, this idea of back to basics, stripping off that stuff and, and getting back to the basics of how to actually role play um, in a Dungeons and Dragons or fantasy type game um, is, is, in my opinion, I think, I think the way to, to, to do that is to go back and strip these things away, I should say. So um, I hope you like the video. hope you like the channel. hope you like the other videos. Um, again, like and subscribe. Share it around. Um, of course, that's the way uh, YouTube works, right? They have an algorithm that looks at all those things. So if you like it and you want to help support and boost the channel, please do so. Um, uh, always leave a comment down below. I like to uh, comment as back with you as fast as I can um, to try to continue to share community. Ultimately, that's the goal here is to uh, to come together as uh, as fellow gamers and just to share this community and this love for Dungeons and Dragons that we all um, have together and to build and grow and encourage one another. Um, thanks again for uh, checking us out. Um, and please, as I always say at the end of my videos, um, go have fun with whatever game you're playing and may all your roles be nat 20s. Take care.